So what is endometrium? Endometrium is the lining of your womb. That is the lining of the uterus. It's called the endometrium. Hello everybody. My name is Dr. Vandana Ramanathan. So what is endometrium? Endometrium is the lining of your womb. That is the lining of the uterus. It's called the endometrium. Now the thickness of this endometrium is important for you to have a healthy pregnancy. So a good thick endometrium is more nourishing and this will help to have a healthy pregnancy. At the rest, it will help in implantation and to continue the pregnancy. So the endometrium should be thick and it should be receptive to the embryo. So this will give you better success rates at pregnancy. Usually a thickness of 8 millimeters and above is considered as a normal endometrial lining which is good for implantation. Endometrial lining that is less than 7 millimeters can be considered as a thin endometrium and the chances of successful pregnancy falls. But it is not necessary that every patient with a thin endometrium of 6 or 7 millimeters should have negative pregnancy. There are studies that have shown that even uh, endometrial lining with 6 or 7 mm thickness can give pregnancies but definitely the chances of successful pregnancies increase if the endometrial thickness is good. Now what are the symptoms of thin endometrium? So patients who can who might present with uh, maybe abnormal menstrual bleeding or very less uh, bleeding during menstruation or even you know infertility patients who come to us on evaluation we find out that they have thin endometrium they may be totally asymptomatic so they will never know that uh, they have this thin endometrium unless and until they go to a fertility specialist and get themselves evaluated what are the causes of thin endometrium now for the endometrium to grow now endometrium grows in a uh, there are two phases to this uh, endometrial growth one is the proliferative phase and one is the secretory phase the proliferative phase is when your endometrial lining is grown. Now, it depends on estrogen for this. So, if there are, if the body has low levels of estrogen, then the endometrium might not grow well. Second is, if the blood flow to the uterus is not good, then again, this will hamper the growth of the endometrium. Third is, if the patient has history of previous pelvic infections, especially genital tuberculosis, which has affected the endometrial lining, this will definitely cause a a thin endometrium or a pale scarred endometrium. For this previous uh, surgeries which have breached the endometrium. So any surgeries like uh, DNC, uh, curating the uterine cavity repeatedly, these kind of uh, surgeries can scar the uterine lining and cause thin endometrium. Fourthly, any drugs like oral contraceptive pills or even fertility drugs like uh, clomiphene can cause thin endometrium. So first and foremost, when you go to a doctor, the doctor will check your previous records, maybe previous treatment history, see your ultrasound scanning, see whether you have a thin endometrium and ascertain the cause. So what do we do? Now how do we treat this? So first and foremost, like I told, we will evaluate. We will do an ultrasound scan to check for the uterine lining. And depending on the cause, we will treat. So if we uh, suspect any history of, if there is a previous history of tuberculosis, uh, or if we are suspecting that the endometrium is very thin, we can do a hysteroscopy. We can see whether there are any uh, whether there is scarring of the endometrial lining, or if it is looking very thin and pale, we can take a biopsy and send it for testing for infection and tuberculosis. If it comes positive, we can treat the tuberculosis, and there are chances that post that post treatment of this uh, infection, the lining may improve. Uh, what other modalities of treatment is there for thin endometrium? So, whenever we are doing an IVF cycle, if we see that the endometrial lining is very thin, uh, we plan to postpone the embryo transfer. So, what we do is because of the thin lining, we might, uh, if we get good embryos, we will freeze it and we will uh, do the embryo transfer at a later date because we can enhance this growth of the endometrial lining with uh, medications at a later date. So we will freeze the embryos and plan a frozen embryo transfer. So what other treatment modalities are there when we are planning embryo transfer in patients who had a history with the history of thin endometrial lining or if we notice during the IVF stimulation that the lining is quite thin. So one is we perform hysteroscopy, rule out any scarring, 
uh, rule out any infections. Post this, when we start preparation of the endometrial lining, what we do is we give estrogen supplements. So these estrogen supplements come in oral form as well as gel form and vaginal form. So we can give these estrogen supplements which will increase the endometrial growth. Now, in spite of this, if the endometrium is not growing, there are some adjuvants that can improve the blood circulation also, like aspirin and uh, sildenafil, which can be used as adjuvants to improve the blood circulation of the uterus, which will again enhance the line, uh, uh, uterine uh, growth of the uterus, uh, uterine lining. What else? Now, there are some newer technologies. So, patients, in spite of these medications, sometimes do not respond to uh, treatment. In these patients, we have some newer technologies that have come, like something like uh, GCSF, that is granulocyte colony stimulating factor. Now, this is an injection which uh, enhances, which helps in the growth of the uterus lining. So, we can instill this uh, GCSF injections into the uterine cavity during endometrial preparation. And we have seen that this has benefited many patients and improved their endometrial lining. There is one more newer modality of treatment called PRP. Now PRP is platelet-rich plasma. How is this PRP prepared is? We take whole blood of the patient herself and that blood is processed so that the plasma which is rich in growth factors is extracted. This plasma which is rich in growth factors is again instilled into the uterine cavity during the preparatory phase of the uh, endometrium, when we also give tablets for the endometrium lining to start to grow, we also instill this platelet rich uh, plasma into the uterine cavity. This again has shown to improve the thickness of the endometrium in several patients, and we have seen that it has benefited many patients. So, these are newer modalities which are available with us, which we can try for patients who had repeated thin endometrium. Uh, I would also like to highlight another uh, test called an ERA test that is endometrial receptivity assay. So when we uh, do this endometrial receptivity assay, what we do is we prepare the endometrium the same way what we uh, do when we have to do a frozen embryo transfer. And once the lining is good enough, it is thick enough, we take uh, we start progesterone injections and the time when we plan the embryo transfer, at that time instead of transferring the embryo, we take a biopsy of this lining and we send it for testing to see whether that endometrium is receptive to the embryo at that particular window. So when the result comes back, we get to know whether that window of receptivity is correct for that patient or whether we have to change the timing so that we can do the embryo transfer, uh, the, the, the uh, personalized embryo transfer where the receptivity for some patients, the window of implantation changes and we can do the embryo transfer accordingly. So this is an added test that we can do in patients who have had repeated uh, IVF failures or thin endometrium where they have had failures. So at least we know that it is a personalized embryo transfer that we are planning. Now, once we have done all the tests and tried all modalities, some patients are still unable to have a good healthy lining. So in spite of all uh, treatment uh, modalities tried on them, if they are not able to get a good endometrial lining or if their endometrium is completely scarred or full of uh, adhesions, then these patients as a final option will probably require surrogacy as the last option. So if you have a history like this, please uh, get in touch with your fertility specialist. They will be able to guide you regarding the treatment modalities, the newer advances that are available and uh, we can try it for you and if it is successful then definitely you have a chance of carrying your own pregnancy which is the wish for every lady. So I hope uh, this video has been useful for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.